A late Magdalenian hunting camp at Vilchitsa. A few scenes of excavations and surroundings. The Magdalenian site of Vilchitsa lies in southern Poland, and more precisely in the Sandomierz upland, a part of the eastern foothills of the Holy Cross Mountains. Historically, it is the northern region of Lesser Poland. The site is just a few hundred meters to the south of a small agricultural town of Wilczyce. It is a rich, rolling country covered by a thick bed of Lers, highly dissected by small rivers flowing towards the east into the Vistula. One of these rivers is the Opatówka, running in a deep and relatively wide valley at the foot of the Wilczyca Hill a dominating Lurs-covered ridge with the ancient hunter's camp located on the top. The Opatówka is a small river, an eastern tributary of the Middle Vistula. Today, its bed is not natural and has been channeled by man in recent times, and it is now much smaller than it used to be in the late Pleny Glacial. The Vilchitsa Hill stands some 40 metres above the modern floor of the valley, which at the time of the late Magdalenian settlement was considerably deeper. The modern floor of the Opatówka Valley is flat and covered by woods, bushes and rich meadows. On the south, the floodplain of the river is also bordered by high Lurs-covered hills, grading into a dissected Lurs plateau. The perfectly chosen location of the Magdalenian encampment gave an impeccable view of the long and wide section of the valley, locked by narrow gorges in the west close to the camp and to the east some five kilometers away. The late Magdalenian remains of the hunting camps here are displaced and embedded in an ice wedge cast forming a polygonal network truncated by the late glacial and recent erosion. Extensive archaeological excavations concentrated on exploring the central portion of the flat top. The work required a considerable amount of equipment, including a water tank providing water for the wet sieving of the site matrix, the Lurse. Long stratigraphic trenches helped to place the prehistoric camp in an exact chronological and paleo-environmental context. Professor Maria Wanchot headed the team of researchers responsible for the job.
In the late glacial period, the top of the Vilcetsa hill was first dissected by galleys and considerably lowered and flattened by erosion that took away more than two metres of Lurse together with the archaeological remains. That's why the top part of the Vilcetsa hill today is wide and almost flat. The central part of the ice wedge cast exposed in the archaeological cuttings is rich in finds including stone, flint, bone, antler and ivory artefacts as well as powdered red ochre staining the Lurse matrix. The ice wedge cast truncated by erosion and cutting into the thick Lurse bed appears just under a thin tilled upper horizon of a degraded recent soil. Many pieces of sandstone slabs, possibly from the floors of ancient dwellings, were found in vertical and semi-vertical position. The stones had probably slid into fissures formed between the ice core of the wedge and its walls during the seasonal thaw. Among the bones are various anatomical parts of mammals, including fragments of a wild horse jaw and rhinoceros vertebrae. Of outstanding interest is a tight concentration of arctic fox teeth pendants, suggesting that the ornaments had become buried in the wedge matrix when still forming a chain of beads, a necklace, or that the pendants were packed in a container, for example a pouch. Horse ribs are often relatively well preserved and common finds, while the long bone of a hooping swan wing is an exceptional find. Indeed, it takes a lot of time to remove it from a hard consolidated Lurse matrix. Flagging the finds facilitates progressive three-dimensional recording of each specimen and is a key factor in tackling complex prehistoric sites as much as the careful excavation of the discovered specimens, a horse rib in this case.
Script by Professor Romuald Shield, read by Paul Barford.